Hello. Hello. Good morning to His Holiness yeah. and to all our audience oh. joining us today from various parts of the world. Today, amidst this pandemic, it's rather an auspicious day for me and all our audience to have with us His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, the living Buddha amongst us. His Holiness, uh, are you able to hear me? Hmm. Now okay. Now okay. Yes. His Holiness is rightly regarded as the manifestation of Avloki Teeshwar, the Bodhisattva of compassion and the highest spiritual leader of the Indian Buddhism. With great honor and prestige, I would like to pray to His Holiness on behalf of Texas IIT Bombay and all our audience. His Holiness, we have always considered yourself as the son of India and have worked towards the revival of ancient Indian wisdom. In the context of the same, I request you to enlighten us with your views on how we can combine ancient Indian knowledge with the modern education system and how we could give education a more moral touch and make it more impactful. Oh. Ancient Indian knowledge. Ah. Ancient Indian knowledge. Now we are. So, firstly, uh, Namaste. Oh. I really uh, uh, feel. I said, very happy because now India, the over a thousand years, uh, the concept of Ahimsa, concept of Karuna, you see, in this country, you see, these two very important or say, the concept develop. With that, eventually, you see, a uh, lot of philosophy and including logic. So, so later, uh, those great Indian uh, thinkers, uh, philosophers, you see, they carry the message of Ahimsa and Karuna through logical way. So now, uh, today, uh, of course, I respect all tradition because I fully committed promotion of religious harmony and or say the harmony in different people uh, like that. So therefore, I respect all different tradition. Uh, but if we, uh, through a logical approach, investigation, then the India's, you see, thousand year old, this is a uh, concept very logical. Now, uh, practically, today's world really need ahimsa and karuna. If these two things, you see, remain also they alive, and more people you see, pay attention, then uh, our world uh, much sort of peaceful, much better. So therefore, yeah, and then India's also, you see, important thing is uh, secular. So this concept related with uh, some dharma, uh, but then uh, not necessarily, you, see, you should follow or believe dharma, religion. Uh, whether believe 
certain things or not, it's up to individual. Generally, we really need the secular ethics. So these uh, two things, ahimsa, karuna, is actually the secular ethics. And then the karuna and ahimsa is a further also the uh, or say the, uh, then different religious tradition, different philosophy, you see, involved. So now, uh, today, I feel great honor to speak with uh, people who actually belong this country. So we are actually follow follower or student of this ancient Indian thought. I always describe in thousand years ago, you see, you are our guru. We are chela. You see, we learn uh, from India. Uh, now the seventh century, the Tibetan uh, king, he married with Chinese princess, and also, uh, also, firstly Chinese introduced Chinese or the emperor introduced Buddhism in Tibet, but uh, the Tibetan uh, king. Song Zheng Kambo. He married with Chinese uh, or say princess, uh, and also you see the most statue, uh, I mean important statue, Buddha statue, and picture, that one, you see, brought from China. Uh, but it seems, you see, the Tibetan Emperor, Song Zheng Kambo, 7th century, is certainly he enjoyed that marriage, and, uh, uh, but he uh, has a feel too tired to learn Chinese letter, too complicated. So he, in spite marriage, and very close link, he determined uh, he want to develop our own uh, the script, Tibetan script, copy from Indian <coughs> Devanagari, uh, and alphabet like that. Uh, so then, eighth century, when you see Buddhism introduced. Tibet by uh, Nalendra master, Shanda Rakshita. Uh, that's the 8th century. The, again, Tibetan emperor, how uh, he decided Buddhism is concerned must bring from di directly from India, not through China. Uh, and then, uh, The Tibetan Emperor Chisun Tezen, he invited uh, at that time one of the top master of Nalanda, Shanta Rakshita, very old. But he invited. Then Shanta Rakshita reached Tibet. He advised to Emperor Chisun Tezen, uh, since you have your own language, your own script, so now, should translate uh, from Sanskrit or from Bali, so on. So then, uh, eventually, you see, uh, also the Tibetan 
uh, Buddhist tradition. Uh, very much they also they also they also they or tradition or uh, like uh, Nalendra. We extensively use logical approach. So uh, the Nalanda tradition, even Buddha himself, you see, uh, made clear, all oh, my follower, monks, nuns, should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation. So he, you see, show us the, ex, or say the investigation, logical approach is important. So the Nalanda master, uh, like Nagarjuna and Aryasanga, uh, and Dignak, Dharma Kirti, Chanda Kirti, uh, Buddha Palita, all these Nalanda master. You see, uh, they are sort of way of thinking, always investigate. Even Buddha's own word, if you find some uh, difficult uh, to, to accept because some illogical, then we have the right to reject Buddha's own word. Like Nagarjuna, reject some Buddha's own word. That's something great. Uh, so, so, so the, the, the concept of secular, so some, some sort of what's the, uh, philosophical things or logical things uh, which mentioned in Buddhist text, uh, you should consider academic subject rather than just you say, oh, this is uh, uh, part of Buddhism or taught by Buddha. We must accept it. not that way. So therefore, you see, the Indian concept the secular way. So consider all these uh, subject as an academic subject, not religious subject. So religion, individual matter. Uh, but this knowledge is knowledge for everybody, particularly now today's world. These ancient Indian knowledge uh, or say they based on Karuna, Ahimsa, these world need. Oh. So, uh, different religion, that's personal matter. But these concepts are something uh, relevant for humanity. So I'm very, very happy uh, having this, uh, what's the meeting, uh, and then half joke, uh, over a thousand years, uh, we as a chela of Indian guru. Now today, mm, Indian guru, I think much neglected in this knowledge. <laughs> so now, uh, traditional Indian, guru, Indian gurus, uh, chela, now have to act like guru. <laughs> so in any way, now, real sort of point is that now today's world, a uh, lot of problem, many problem, essentially, Human beings, our own creation. You see, uh, nobody want problem. You know why we create a lot of problem? The reason 
You see, our thinking, not sort of what's the uh, wise or related with uh, ahimsa, karuna. Uh, so therefore, now, uh, this time, the thousand-year-old India's sort of thought, karuna, uh, ahimsa, now must, was the, not only preserve, must sort of revive. Uh, and on the basis of secular way. Other country, you see, uh, different tradition, uh, Christianity, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, and so on. That's their personal religion. But as far as uh, concept of ahimsa and karuna is concerned, it's common for, common for every human being. So now, uh, I always feel India uh, in modern time. Now look, India, I think uh, two most populated nations, China uh, and India. This country, comparatively, very peaceful. And all major world religious tradition live together uh, in this land. For example, you see, in Muslim country, Shia and Sunni fighting. In this country, uh, I never heard problem between Indian, Sh Shia, and Sunni. Like that, I never heard. When I heard our neighboring country some problem between Shia and Sunni. I surprise. So therefore, the India's thousand-year-old tradition, you see, ahimsa, karuna, is the really basis of happy society, happy country. So now, India uh, should. Uh, I say pay more attention and uh, show the rest of the world the religious harmony uh, and in according principle of ahimsa and karuna. So now our Indian brothers, sisters, is it now uh, in previous century. Uh, Mahatma Gandhiji, you see, show world ahimsa. Uh, now, I think we uh, follow that and combine with karuna. And then secular way, you see, these different philosophical sort of or say the ideas now, India's now uh, philosophy is that nothing exists objectively, independently. It is very close, uh, very close of thinking. The kasa, uh, kasa, quantum physics. Oh, quantum physics. You see, quantum physicist. They say and nothing, appear, nothing exists as appears, the external thing, material thing. So there is a big gap, appearance and reality. That's a quantum physics, they say. That's very important. You see, most of the uh, negative emotion, such as anger or jealousy, too much attachment, uh, you see, these, hmm, you see, based on appearances. So, uh, the, in order to reduce these negative, strong emotion, which based on uh, 
appearances, thinking deeper line, then uh, nothing exists as appears. That's exactly the Indian uh, sort of ancient, ancient philosophy. You see, uh, it mentioned that. Like late Raja Ramana, once he told me the quantum physics in the West, it is new. But this country, he told me over 2,000 years ago, already developed the quantum physics. And then he recite some Nagarjuna's, uh, some verses of Nagarjuna's text. It's very true, very true. So India, uh, in this deeper level, uh, in order to tackle emotion, a subtle way, I think India's tradition is uh, very useful, very helpful. And meantime, on secular way. So now that uh, I always see now telling these days, uh, for example, uh, for example, hygiene of physical already exist on this planet, much sort of develop. Now hygiene of emotion, only India's tradition, including uh, other religion also, the other religion, uh, not much talk about, you see, uh, uh, the uh, mental, uh, what's the, uh, mental hygiene. Uh, the e hygiene, of the hygiene of emotion. Of hy hygiene of emotion. Ka. Uh, uh, so now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, now the world really uh, facing some crisis about emotion. So in, in such sort of case, India's thousand-year-old tradition can help through education way, not religious way, strictly based on secular. So one of my commitment is a revival of this ancient Indian knowledge, how to take care of peace of mind on the basis of ahimsa and karuna. Now, I am sort of fully committed to revival of this ancient Indian knowledge or secular way. So, so now, uh, questions? No questions? Any question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the answer. And uh, for the first question, I would like to invite Shijan Nayak from Delhi Technological University, India, to ask his question. Greetings, Sensualiness. My question is, although the purpose of education is to gain knowledge, although the purpose of education is to gain knowledge, I can't just help thinking of marks when I see others scoring higher. How do we aim for gaining knowledge from the education, refraining from succumbing to the competition? The sense of competition, you see, actually uh, two kind. One, you see, uh, in order to uh, promote uh, knowledge among students, uh, among people, you see, you try to be first, top, and show them, and to pursue them. Uh, that kind of competition is positive. Uh, another 
negative competition in order to you become first actually create a problem to other uh, try to cause uh, other behind that's wrong so every human action is a much depend on motivation since uh, sincere motivation compassionate motivation combined with a wider perspective then so sometimes action appears a little bit negative but because of motivation and utilize the or say the wisdom so then uh, it could be very positive very helpful okay so competition is necessary particularly when we uh, as a study uh, the as a philosophy or logic the including myself when i uh, carry final examination there some kind of as say the uh, I, i i should be first and other uh, as say they try to sometimes to say even cleverness <laughs> a little bit che- cheating also <laughs> so these are basically you see sincere motivation at good purpose no problem okay and you see uh, dignak and dharmakirti this logical sort of approach you see if you too honest uh, then uh, the difficult <laughs> so you should be more clever uh, according the debate sort of uh, thinking ka debate or debate is thinking And then accordingly sometimes you need little uh, sort of clever cleverness i also do that <laughs> like that so uh so all this depend on uh, motivation okay then next question thank you solina The next question is from Bhardendra Dubey, a student from JP Institute of Information Technology, Noida. Greetings, His Holiness. My question is, what is the relation between physical and mental wellness, and how do we obtain a balance of both in our lives? Thank you. Oh, physical health. uh mental health very close link oh the we we usually say the physical health some part your blood your sort of certain physical element uh, uh not balance then difficult but you see the uh, physical now uh, now for example the high uh, blood pressure very much related with mental peace mentally peace no not much anxiety uh, uh not much sort of how to say uh kasoda fear so oh, then the blood pressure these are very low so uh, peace of mind mental level complete restful that also you see great effect for physical health okay so now in these days you see some uh, illness because of too much anxiety too much anger uh, so now uh so uh mental health very sort of related 
with physical health. In some cases, of course, it's a physical uh, uh, illness disturb our mind. But many cases, mind peace, peaceful. And then automatically, body element also goes smoothly, like that. OK. So now, as I, al as I already mentioned, the Indian tradition, you see, the logical way to keep karuna, ahimsa, is the best way to keep peace of mind. That automatically help physical health. OK. I, I, I think I can, of course, uh, not nice, but uh, some relevant here. Uh, I'm now uh, 87 year old, 87 year old. Whole my life, you see, uh, difficult. When I was in Tibet, a lot of difficulties. Uh, and then India, when we reach India as a refugee, yeah, there are a lot of problems. And mainly, you see, inside Tibet, a lot of problems because of Chinese suppression. And one way, Chinese sub ruthless suppression, Chinese communist, and one way, Tibetan determined. Uh, but we, uh, even, you see, thinking towards the Chinese, those was a day, uh, hardliner. As we consider them as a human brother, sisters. And actually, is our neighbor. Uh, for example, one Tibetan monk who spent 18 years in Chinese gulag, Chinese prison. Uh, The, I think in early 80, 80, you see, he found opportunity come to uh, here. Uh, then we talk, uh, since I know him uh, before 59, I know him very well. So I asked him uh, what kind of life. 18 years in Chinese prison. He told me, occasionally, he faced some danger. I thought danger on his life. Oh, what kind of danger? And his answer is danger, losing compassion towards Chinese. So he feel, you see, Keeping compassion towards your enemy is very essential. So he considered losing compassion towards the troublemaker, he considered very dangerous. So as a result, you see that person very peaceful, like that. So the Shantadeva, once you see in his writing, he mentioned, your enemy is best teacher. Uh, you can practice patience at uh, many good things from uh, when you face some problem with your enemy. So enemy uh, is best teacher. The Shanta the uh, writing. Uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. Oh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. Mentioned like that. Actually, you see, training of our mind make distinction, destructive emotion and constructive emotion. Then constructive emotion uh, is direct sort of weapon to reduce destructive emotion. Uh, so self-centered, selfish is the key factor for problem. For that, counterforce is altruism. 
as I already mentioned, is the corona, altruism, is the antidote of self-centered selfish. Then, another thing, uh, uh, the thousand-year-old, you see, India's thinking, things does not uh, exist as sort of independently. Uh, the Sanskrit word, patit samupand, things uh, exist due to a different factor, interdependency. So that concept is uh, uh, very helpful you see, to reduce uh, the things exist as appears. The appears something independent. The reality, due to other factors, including your own viewpoint, you see, creates different reality. On that basis, then angers, attachment, fear, all these negative emotions, you see, come. So therefore, uh, these two, two practices, one we call upaya site, that's karuna, one praja site, nothing uh, exists as appears, as independently, uh, ep- uh, independently exists, things are interdependent. So this ancient Indian was the uh, knowledge. The, this very very useful. You see, to keep our mind calm. Even you see difficult circumstances, you can keep your mind calm. So as I mentioned briefly, uh, I myself also student of this great Indian master. I practice. So, you see, I can keep peace of mind. When I uh, heard some problem, some sort of suppression in Tibet, you see, I can uh, pray uh, those, uh, what's it, uh, those Chinese officials, hardliner officials, I especially, you see, Pray for them, like that. These are very helpful, you see, to keep peace of mind. Uh, with that, you see, it seems as now I have no blood pressure, always low. That also some sort of connection, what my peace of mind. Okay. <laughs> I never touch tranquilizer. My, my mind always the peace. All this, I believe, the Indian sort of thought, ahimsa, uh, karuna, this really mm, uh, makes my mind more calm. That also is effect my physical condition. Okay. Now, next question. Thank you, Holiness. I would next like to invite Gitesh Pudhiraj from Balbharti Public School, Pritampura, India, to ask his question. Namaste, His Holiness. My question is, how can one be satisfied with what one has and not care about what others have got? Thank you. Uh, I think... Mm, the uh, material things, including your own good good name, or uh, all this, you see, too much sort of grasping, my 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 my, or uh, that that brings uh, more trouble. Mm? So contentment is very important. Then. Uh, once you have the practice of contentment, then mm, it's the other sort of uh, what's the kasuta, long jukare, oh, others uh, welfare, ka welsa, 
clothes now. Oh. Then certainly no sort of desire or other sort of uh, uh, what's it, thing like that. So the firstly important the we should know the inner value. The material thing are secondary. If we too much emphasis about the material value, or uh, your own case, no contentment, always want, 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 then uh, uh, since you too much sort of also the grasping the material thing, uh, then others sort of material also sometimes you develop some desire like that. Okay. Now next. To ask the next question, we have with us Julia Riley from Rice University, Houston, Texas. Greetings, His Holiness. I have taken a class at university on Buddhism, and I'm learning about the middle way, which has really changed my view on life. However, I still have trouble reconciling absolute truth with relative truth and discerning when to interpret my life and the decisions I make through one lens or the other. If you have any wisdom about this conflict, I would love if you could share it. Now you mentioned here uh, true truth. Uh, uh, Absolute. Uh, Absolute. Absolute and truth and conventional truth. Uh, that is uh, actually the uh, the mainly you see also the uh, philosophical field is always make distinction to truth. Uh, but uh, but then our daily. Uh, that our daily sort of life. Uh, now, for example, the, as I already mentioned, the there is differences appearance and reality. Now, reality, we refer, kaza, uh, Ultimate truth. Ultimate truth, uh, and appearance is the. Uh, uh, conventional. conventional truth. Uh, there are also, you see, many uh, different levels. You see, due to different sort of uh, mental sort of investigation. Now, for example, mm, uh, now Indian, uh, generally Indian tradition, Atma is more or less ultimate truth. Uh, so this was the uh, usual sort of uh, feeling of self is kasa. Separate. Uh, conventional truth. Oh, conventional truth. Yes, this is here. Nobody deny, argue. Uh, but then the uh, life after life. Uh, and also, you see, we uh, usually, you see, we, we can easily say, this is my body, this is my mind, where is I? Now, that's a thousand-year-old investigator, where is I? Uh, and since, you see, Indian tradition, uh, previous life, this life, next life. So obviously, this body, at time of death, no longer. So, the atma, the some sort of also the basis of uh, identity of I, uh, uh, which you see more or less independent from this body. 
that we call atma. Now, uh, uh, among Indian tradition, uh, particularly as a Buddhist philosophy, uh, where is atma? So, is a Buddhist believe anatma, atma, anatma. Uh, anatma, uh, no independent as the I or self, uh, but self the designated on the combination of body and mind, particularly mind. Now here, the uh, mind, the, sen- the five senses of organs, then sixth mind, chit, uh, Mental, mental mind. Mental consciousness. Ka. Mental consciousness. Mental consciousness. So all these uh, negative emotion, uh, positive emotion, mainly is related with sixth mind, chit. Hmm? So all uh, emotions related with chit mind. The 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 eye consciousness, hear consciousness smell consciousness, all these are the something like what's the uh, medium. Serv- like a medium. Uh, like a medium. Uh, or you say the serving the main mind, chit. So so these eye consciousness, ear consciousness no self sorvarsidi kasoda. No, no power to designate. Uh, just as you carry the message. Then sixth mind, judge. This is good, this is bad. Uh, then accordingly, too much gris- grasping. And then dislike, uh, anger, or jealousy, all these, all these things happen, and something positive, and uh, attachment, like that. So the grasping uh, things uh, firstly appears, uh, then grasping. Uh, with that, then chit sixth mind make distinction. This is something good. This is something bad. Then. You see, too much grasping. So, uh, chit mind, uh, the final decision maker, like that. So now, uh, roughly speaking, uh, we should not sort of decide uh, things, things existence as appears. Now, as quantum physicists say, uh, we should not bother appearances. They must go deeper level. So we can say here, uh, the two tooth, two tooth, superficial tooth, and deeper level tooth. Then, in in, in religious field. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Buddhism, anatma theory. Then a lot of sort of, uh, also the, a different conception about uh, two truth. Uh, because of the description or idea about the two truth, then uh, firstly, Buddhism non-Buddhism, like Jainism, very good. Mm. But there are differences. So within Buddhism, Vibhashek, Chitta Mantra, Sudantik, and Chitta Mantra, and then Madhimika. Within Madhimika, there are uh, 
प्रसंगी का मध्यम का है ना स्वतंत्रिक मध्यम का सो दे आ दोस इंडियन ग्रेट थिंग रियली एस रिजल्ट ऑफ एनालाइज एनालाइज दें डिफरेंट फिलोसफी यू सी दिस द बेसिस बुद्ध हिमसेल्फ यू सी मेड दें लाइक नागरजुना और ये आसान का दिस दें यू सी दे फर्दर सो डी इन्वेस्टिगेशन दें द सटल लेवल ऑफ डिफरेंसेस एंड दें आल्सो यू सी दिस ग्रेट इंडियन मास्टर दे आर क्वाइट ब्लांड लाइक चंद्रकृति the his philosophy is nagarjuna's is a philosophy nothing exists as appears uh, so uh, so he mentioned now i can't translate the in madhyamika avatara madhyamika avatara you see he mentioned the subtle level of Uh, meaning of shinyata. Uh, even some of those great Buddhist master philosopher, like Bosubant and Dignak, and so on, you see, they also you see whether they abandon this philosophy or not, and he he say yes, they abandon. <laughs> so when I ka. Uh, When I uh, read that passage, passage, that passage, and I feel uh, quite proud and quite happy. Uh, I am uh, for me this philosophy. Uh, I think very scientific, uh, very realistic. And firstly, uh, very similar, very close sort of link uh, with quantum physics. So therefore, uh, I always feel uh, I'm the one student of Nagarjuna, and was uh, it the Chandrakirti? So if Chandrakirti um, today, Chandrakirti uh, opportunity to meet, I think Chandrakirti, I think, Kasur, patch it back. No, not champu cha. Pad. Ah, pad. Oh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Actually, you see, this thinking is the best weapon to reduce. All negative emotion, all negative emotion, ultimately ignorance. So ignorance, uh, we believe things exist as appears. Uh, that develop that basis of grasping. Uh, so in order to reduce that, that nothing uh, exists as appears. Uh, Things, uh, just a mere mental designation, nothing independently exists. So I also used to practice this daily, uh, morning. As soon as I wake up, I'm thinking, recite some of the, was it the sentence, wrote by, yeah, uh, Chandrakirti, no, Chandrakirti, no. daughter, Chandrakirti. Uh, and combined with altruism, very helpful, very helpful. Okay, and there is story hmm? uh, in Tibet. One, you see, uh, uh, thinker investigate thinking. Where is I? Then finally, uh, he found. Nothing. Then he he, he touch. You see his 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 cloth cloth or his body, his body. Then 
he found there is something. <laughs> like that. So, so these are the Buddhism point thinking, Madhimika philosophy. Extremely useful, very useful. The most powerful antidote to cut the ignor ultimate ignorance. So this uh, my daily practice, the very important part of practice. Very good. I'm hoping um, if now Chantakirti uh, there or Nagarjun uh, there, I, I think they, uh, they, they, most probably, I think they, as I mentioned earlier, they pet me uh, and encouraging me. They consider I am quite, uh, what's the intelligent uh, student of this philosophy. Okay. These are not only knowledge, but you see, uh, very powerful weapon to reduce negative emotion. Okay. Then next. Thank you, Ms. Holira. The next question is from Karthik Ladha, a student from IIT Bombay, India. Greetings, His Holiness. My question to you is, in correspondence to the COVID pandemic, global warming, human-made disasters, and political instability, as well as technological innovations, space explorations, medical advancements, we wish to ask that if these humans are really making progress, or are we just creating bigger problems as we manage to solve the old ones? Now these. Uh, this uh, illness, something, uh, something new. Uh, yes, certainly, you see, uh, I, I, uh, I'm not expert. You see these things, but I, be, I believe, you see. Uh, uh, the world, the what's it, the whole galaxies. You see, uh, there is beginning, so there is end. So now things are always changing. Uh, now, the. Uh, the global warming. Now, the many scientists now they really sort of also they uh, recognize uh, things are getting warmer, 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 and there is a danger. Eventually, you see, Tibet uh, will become uh, also the desert. Uh, so Tibet. Uh, usually, you see the whole. I think, I think we can say whole Asia, major river come from Tibet. So Tibet, uh, uh, there are a lot of snow. And high altitude, but now within my own lifetime, this when I was young, some my you see friend. They say when they were young, they say some mountain, more snow. Within my own lifetime, less and less, less. So now that's because uh, of nature, what's it? Natural process. Oh, nature pro pro process. process, like that. So now we should pay more attention about. Uh, Ecology, very important. Now you and also now saying, uh, are paying more attention, particularly the uh, United Nations uh, General Secretary, 
wonderful. So now we have to, while we just as we, as we carry busy life, then due to global warming, gradually now this water uh, reduce and uh, blue or so the land eventually uh, desert. So therefore, mm, we have to pay uh, some attention like that. So one of my commitment regarding Tibet now preserve Tibetan ecology uh, and Tibetan uh, culture. The political matter I already uh, I say uh, retired. Uh, the political matter we have the elected political leadership. Uh, so my sort of I say responsibility is to preserve Tibetan culture, the Tibetan sort of knowledge, which come from as I mentioned earlier from India. So now uh, I think the great Nalanda master's sort of thought we kept so really worthwhile. And with that, Tibetan language also is the best language to describe these subtle philosophical views and psychology, these things. So that's my commitment and uh, preserve Tibetan ecology. I think material development, including science and technology, I think we should say these are useful, but should not go extreme way. Uh, see, there sometimes you see uh, expert, they only think they're on one field. Uh, so not much sort of uh, concern about side effect. That's, I think, uh, we should, you should pay more attention for a holistic way. Just, you see, pay one. Now, uh, for example, the... Uh, a nuclear physicist, nuclear. Uh, one way is very expert, but then uh, only think that way, and then a lot of fears, you see, bring. Something like that, uh, our sort of thinking in different fields, we should keep more holistic, not just one. Like that. Okay. Now, next. The next question is from Karima Bhargav from ICAI India. Sure. Greetings, His Holiness. My question is how to deal with fear of failure and control our thoughts by remaining in the ideal state of mind? and deal with every panicking situation calmly without being scared. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I feel education. Education, including about our inner world, our mind, our emotion. Uh, so here, the Buddhist psychology, 
the knowledge of tradition, you say, about mind, about these different emotions. And each emotion, you see, the particular sort of causes and antidote, all these very detailed explanation in according the Buddhist psychology. So that is uh that did we so, as a fear, oh, there are fears with reason, with need. Oh, uh, but meantime, you see, uh, many cases just our own exaggeration and fear. But here we need, like you see, Buddhist uh, or the, or the philosophy say, the negative side, then antidote side. Oh. Like a fear out of anger, killing, or oh, like that. Uh, then the also the counterforce, compassion, forgiveness, these things. All these, uh, I think now this country in here, the Shanta Dewa's book, uh, uh, Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. Uh, Kasa, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. Charya Avatara. Hmm. Now Hindi translation available, English translation available. Uh, then, see, since I came to India uh, in Lhasa, you see, uh, teaching of that book quite rare. Uh, after I reached India, you see, uh, I received, you see, the oral transmission, the Shatter Devas book. Now, sixth chapter about you see, uh, uh, how to sort of develop, uh, how to useful patience and intolerance and how harmful, anger, how harmful is antidote tolerance. Uh, a wonderful sort of the presentation. Then eighth century, uh, eighth chapter, uh, Altruism is wonderful. Uh, the self-centered attitude is the key factor for problem. So now, uh, when we face some problem, then you see, think uh, whether there is a way to overcome uh, that fear uh, or not. If you see, uh, if you find, if, if there is sort of possibility to overcome these sort of uh, negative thing which you feel fear, then no use to my sort of I said, fear. Make effort for counterforce. Then those things which uh, in any way ultimately you have to face, uh, no way to overcome, then no use, too much fear. <laughs> it's quite simple. Uh, the Shanta Dewa's book, you see, mentioned like that. So I also, you see, practice that. When I felt, when I faced some problem, analyze. Oh, this problem can overcome. Then, you see, instead of fear or 
demoralized, no determined. Uh, if you see things uh, beyond our control, and because uh, no possibility to overcome, then no use too much worry. Okay. Then next. Thank you, Ms. Holiness. To ask the question next, I would like to invite Sean Evans from the University of Gloucestershire, England. Greetings, Ms. Holiness. I hold compassion as hugely important, but I question where one draws the line uh, with how we act on compassion. In my life, I often come across situations when I feel like helping someone, but doing so would hamper my own progress and work. What should be done in such situations? Good, sir. Uh, basically, we are social animal. So, uh, from birth, our life depends on others' hostility, compassion. Firstly, from our mother. Then, eventually, family member and our neighbor. And now, today, the whole world the future of individual depend on the world human human groups so therefore now uh, they how should they help other and try to reduce other sort of problem is indirectly best way to cause of that. To, to, to preserve your own interest. Because all your life depends on other. So taking care of other, other is indirectly taking care of yourself. You see, anger, I, 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 anger, then creates all your neighbor, you see, something uh, negative. And then finally, you suffer. So taking care about all your neighbor, then when you face some problem, you can ask, you see, uh, or say help this, you see, your neighbor. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, we are social animal. Uh, all individual life uh, entirely depend on, uh, or say, uh, care of others. So now today's world, the global, for example, global economy and global sort of what's the ecology, all these very much depend on other. So now these days I'm telling, I'm expressing, we really need a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, so I'm part of that. Uh, in order to individual yourself be happy life, you see, you should uh, pay uh, how should they, uh, realistic way to to uh, to deal with other people like that. Okay. I uh, sometimes I sort of telling, and also you see feel, the best way to uh, selfish way, to selfish take care of yourself, best way is to take care of other. It's the best way to take uh, for your own self, because your whole life, you see, depend on other. Even to some extent, even animals, birds also, you see, have limited sort of thinking. Uh, you see, for their own sort of interest, for their own survival, you see, taking care, they are a group like that.
Now, next. For the final question of the session to His Holiness, I would like to invite Kunal Bhatt from Mumbai University, India. Uh, my question is, since Buddhism does not believe in the presence of a supernatural God, what are the thoughts of His Holiness on God's existence? Certainly, as I mentioned earlier, you see different religion, different philosophy. Uh, even Buddha uh, himself, you see, uh, also give teaching according to uh, different people whose different mental disposition. Uh, so sometimes Buddha also, you see, uh, See, even Buddha's own word, this body is sort of a burden. Uh, the carrier, uh, this burden is self. So it seems, you see, the, uh, this body. Uh, Today. And uh, I is something complete separate. So as the Buddha is stated uh, according to some, uh, some people's sort of mental disposition. Then uh, some cases Buddha say no I, no self. Uh, make distinction as already we discussed truth, truth. These things. So, uh, so now mm, there are so different people according according sort of different mental disposition. To some people, the creator God uh, very helpful, very good. So I always was telling the uh, Christianity or uh, some Hindus, the creator, I believe. But Jainism, not sort of uh, that kind of faith. And Buddhism also, no, 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 that kind of sort of uh, concept. So otherwise, Muslim, Allah, uh, and Judaism also. Oh. So therefore, you see, that concept also very good. Nobody say God uh, full of anger. No say God loving kindness. We are children of that kind of father, God full of love. So we should be... Uh, Helping each other, loving each other, because we all children of same father. So that concept also is very helpful. We all created by one God, that God full of love, and we all children of that uh, that kind of father, loving kind, or say father. So. Uh, that's very good, very powerful. Hmm? And, and according to Buddhism, you are your own master. Uh, that also is thinking one way, very good. But one way, uh, Buddha say, you are your own master. Whatever I like, I can do. <laughs> so, uh, so all these, you see, uh, great thinkers teach teach us according uh, different people, different mental position. Uh, some people are the creator, concept of creator is wonderful, very good. Okay.
Thank you so much for the insightful and enlightening answers you told us. We pray Ahimsa and Karuna be revived globally in this difficult time for our world. Now, I would like to hand over to Asha Lee. Namaste, Antolinus. We are really highly honored to have had the privilege of hosting you at TechFest this year. Your words were truly inspiring and they certainly struck a chord among us all. They made us look inwards and think more deeply about spirituality and human condition. Now, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to His Holiness on behalf of the entire team of TechFest IIT Bombay community as well as our viewers and participants from across the globe. Then uh, I want to share uh, some sort of story. Uh, South Africa, uh, Archbishop no. Tutu, 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 I really respect him. I really love him. Uh, uh, since we know uh, each other very close, so uh, sometimes, I mean, he even used to come to Dharmasala and a few days we discussed like that. So then, uh, since we know each other very well, and meantime, so respect each other. So therefore, uh, one occasion, he jokingly told me, he as a Christian, believe God. So he ready go to uh, heaven. Uh, Dalai Lama, non-believer. So Dalai Lama go something different place. <laughs> so he hint, he go to heaven because believe God. Dalai Lama, uh, no faith, God, creator, so sinful, go to <laughs> hell. <laughs> That I told, you see, this story, uh, one occasion, some group of people, and 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 some of them told, uh, as respond to me, you see, uh, wherever Dalai Lama go, even hell, they want to go uh, together. <laughs> so. Uh, I respect Christianity, as I mentioned earlier. Wonderful. But it's a whole world created by God. Uh, there are a lot of problems uh, our world. Why God creates that full of problem that world full of problems, full of suffering. Why? So difficult. So India's concept of karma, one's own action, due to all these uh, how say this, suffering, these are due to one's own negative karma. So theory of karma, very good. Karma means action. So all good, bad, depend on one's own action. It's a good action. Helping other, serving other, you see, you get uh, benefit. If you harm other, uh, if you create suffering other, you you will suffer. So, the either you accept God Creator, wonderful, the or no, uh, the Indian tradition, uh, like Jainism and Buddhism. No creator, but everything depends on one's own action. Like that. So, thank you. I really uh, very much enjoy now uh, discussion with our Indian friend. So, I'm the guest of Indian government uh, now over uh, uh, 88, uh, no, no, 87 years I live here, and then another, I think at least uh, 
uh, one decade or two decades, I will remain here in this country. So, uh, uh, we, uh, we can have some opportunity to discuss. And I am thinking seriously uh, now this illness uh, reduce. Then I am very, very eager to go to Delhi or Bombay, uh, Calcutta and Bangalore. You see, meet some Indian uh, education sort of scholars and how to develop uh, in modern Indian education. Uh, uh, modern education mainly related with external thing. So ancient Indian education about mind, uh, these are there. So, so India can combine the existing modern education in this country very good. Now ancient Indian knowledge about mind, uh, about emotion, this must combine the ac uh, academic level, a secular way. So that I'm sort of seriously thinking. So more detailed discussion with educationists uh, among Indian uh, different universities. So I'm thinking very seriously. And some of you also, you see, uh, uh, also have, have this sort of uh, it, uh, opportunity. Or opportunity. Or you see, have the same responsibility to combine modern education and ancient Indian education combined, strictly secular way. Then India, I think, can make a certain significant contribution uh, to the whole world like that. So, thank you. Thank you, Sujanet, for your kind words. We will await your arrival at IIT Bombay sometime soon, too. Thank you to the attendees for being a wonderful audience, and may you and your loved ones stay well. Хорошо, что? Да. Там вот Thank you.